six o'clock. All right, let's get the show on the road. I have the flag in the back. All right, stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Under God. Under God. Under God. Under God. Under God. Under God. Approval of the uh, the minutes, AB. Uh, approval of uh, the minutes of uh, October fifth, twenty twenty, October twelfth, twenty twenty. I'll make a motion to accept October fifth and October twelfth meetings. Second. All approved. Aye. Aye. Action items, vouchers. Uh, 2011-01001 to 2011-029 for $33,473.54. Payment of uh, payroll vouchers, 2011-03001 to 21-1. 030 for $19,511.29. And action item C, payment of water vouchers, 2011-2001 to 2001-2005 to for $3,564.82. Do I hear a motion to approve those action items? Uh, motion to approve, but I think you transposed it. It's uh, four hundred. It's three thirty-three thousand four hundred thirty-seven, not seventy-three. I'm sorry. I I got three thirty-three thousand four hundred and thirty-seven dollars yep. and fifty-four cents. Yes. Okay. I second the motion. All approved. Aye. Aye. All right. Okay. Nay. All right. All approved. Commissioner's report. Me first. Sure. Why not? Uh, of course, the two meetings, the regular port meeting and the special budget meeting on the 12th, um, went to an oyster house meeting on the 13th. Um, I attended via Zoom, the Washington Public Ports um, I only did the redistricting portion on the 22nd and the 23rd. They were really helpful. And uh, I know there was another one, but the redistricting was something that was important because we have to start redistricting next year. And then um, on the 26th, of course, um, North Mason Community Voice, Carla Weaver from the Department of Licensing spoke. It was via Zoom and it was pretty well attended. She was really helpful and she gave me contact information if anybody uh, wants any information about her and her uh, title is justice and law liaison for the Washington Department of Licensing. So she's kind of a go-to if you got a problem. She was great. I was supposed to meet um, on October 27th, a roofing contractor, he came and went, but I did get the bid and it was a little high. And so we're gonna go with our local guy and uh, Item of note, the government funds are not paying for the roofing material and labor. That's the end of my report. All right, I'll go. I uh, as well went to the regular report meeting, the special budget hearing meeting, went to a EDC board via Zoom meeting, and I did a uh, membership committee, EDC membership committee. Um, it's where we re-elect uh, board members we do have some openings this year and we are recruiting for new board members. What we want to do is get somebody, what I want to do is get somebody from the North end. So you have to be a member in good standing for at least one year. I'm getting a list of people that fit that criteria. Um, kind of a, a request was that maybe a local attorney might be interested because you get that perspective, some legal aspects to somebody on the board. We haven't had an attorney on the board in quite some time, if ever. So that's something that I'm working on for the EDC. 
Um, we did renew most board members with the exception of the two vacancies. And we are currently looking for two new board members for the EDC. They continue to work hard on the, uh, the pandemic and the businesses. I did do, um, I did do some, some grant grading for them. Um, it, it was pretty amazing. A lot of local businesses from North Mason, people that we know here locally, um, to see how the businesses are suffering. And um, I did 15 local businesses, not all from North Mason, some from, from Shelton and South Mason, but um, I'm not certain that all 15 got the grant, but I did 15 applications and 15 people got grants. So, so the, there's, they continue to do great work there at the EDC. There's money coming in. It's going to the right people. Um, everybody that I looked at had, had a need. It was, uh, it was pretty amazing to be part of that. And I, I was uh, really proud to be part of that. So yeah, I'm proud of that organization and pretty, pretty lucky to be a part of it. What kind of businesses were the most request, you know, requesting grants? Uh, it, it was mostly food industry. Yeah. You know, a couple of salons and um, you know, massage therapists and, you know, people the hardest hit. Um, some had gotten money for the, the payroll money and before. Yeah, service industry mainly. Gotcha. Thanks. Yeah, pretty neat. All That's I did was a special meeting on the, I think it was the 6th or the 7th of November. So we're going to go into the uh, security officer's report. Okay, since he's not here, I'll read that. Uh, 1027 hours, 1000. Received a call from the executive director about a situation reported to him by Commissioner Cooper about some building materials sitting in the parking lot of the North Shore launch. They were not there the previous day and must have been dropped off during this morning. I told Larry I would look into it and make some calls. 1027 hours 10.08 and contacted David, property owner building the house next door to the boat launch property to see if he knew anything about it. He said no. It wasn't his, and he texted me pictures of the building materials and the invoice left with it. I called the appropriate phone numbers on the invoice and got a hold of the recipient of the goods. He didn't know that the delivery was misdelivered. This home was six addresses south of the North Shore boat launch. Promised to get on the delivery company, get the materials moved ASAP. The materials were removed in short order. The company returned and removed the materials. And that's the end of his report. Okay, executive director report. Okay, this, it's kind of long. So uh, financial issues, we've gone through bias line by line, have fixed a multitude of things that were put in wrong during the original setup, as well as since then. Jan Lusignan, who helped us get the budget done, has helped us clean up numerous issues and bias. And I'm confident that when we are finished, it will run smoother than it has since we made the switch. We put in a number of Saturdays and some evenings on this, but it's nearly done. And while most things are reconciled and up to date, we still have some additional work to do, but we're in the home stretch. Some of these issues that are, some of these are issues that bias got wrong in the initial setup back in 2018. We were their very first port client, so some of that's understandable. Because our system has entries over multiple years, we can't change some things and Jan has fixed as much as possible so that going forward, we won't be dealing with those problems, which will also make things easier for the state auditor. Water system issues. As I noted last month, we will need to hire or contract with a certified water system manager. We're negotiating with Northwest Water Systems, the company that did the update to our water system plan about exactly what a contract like that will cover. I believe we're close to a very workable plan at a reasonable cost and significantly under what we budgeted for 2021. It'll add cost as the system grows, but it'll still be under the budgeted amount at full system build out. It also includes water sampling and testing, which we pay separately for now, as well as all the paperwork submission our current water system manager does. So between what we pay for testing and pay the current water system manager, we'll save about $3,100 a year, which will offset some of the costs of the management contract. 
I'm also in preliminary talks with Northwest Water about planning for our infrastructure upgrades and extension to service both extensions to service both Cedarland and the housing and housing Kitsap when they're ready to start construction. As you know, we've requested a three year extension on the new well installation deadline and ex ecology has expressed a willingness to grant that if we could address and satisfy the concerns of the Squaxin tribe. We've contracted with Aspect Consulting, the firm that addressed the tribal concerns in our original water right application. Those same concerns were raised again after a well extension request to Ecology. We're working directly with the very same person who handled the original application. And after discussions with the tribe, he says everything they've expressed concern about for our extension request has been satisfied. And the tribe will recommend to Ecology that we be granted the extension. I forwarded Aspect's email to all of you saying this a couple of weeks ago. We've also had a request from the Allen Carey water system to use our well as a comparison well for pressure testing. We were led to believe that it's a state requirement. Mr. Carey forwarded a letter to me from Robinson Noble, who also did the original engineering on our system and water right, explaining what the purpose of this test is and exactly what it entails in relation to our well. I concluded this letter, I included this letter in your meeting packet and at Mr. Carey's request sent a copy to our current water system manager for his input. I also spoke with the engineer who wrote the letter and asked him exactly why this test is required. He told me the Allen Carey water system is, is attempting to expand their water right and this is a requirement in that process. I have serious reservations about allowing this because the Allen Carey water system is granted an extension of their water right. It could put them in a position to directly compete with our system for customers in our designated service area. Currently, they're limited by their existing water right to 14 hookups and or 5,000 gallons a day draw from the aquifer. I confirmed this with the engineer who later qualified his remarks by saying he can't speak, he can speak directly to the hydrology issues, but not to the business issues. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, we're, I lost my place here, hold on a second. However, he did reluctantly say he agreed with my assessment of the situation as did our water system manager. However, the engineer who told me the loan grant program that we originally were gonna to use to acquire the Allen Carey water system is still active. I confirmed this with the Department of Health and the manager there who we dealt with originally. And she sent me a lot of information about what we can do to facilitate if there's interest on the part of the Careys. Also in a worst case scenario, we do have the option of eminent domain if we're so inclined. I put this on the agenda for your discussion and a decision on how to proceed. Um, I also spoke today at some length with uh, Doug Peel at Northwest Water Systems, and he basically confirmed the same thing that I felt about it and what the situation would be if they were allowed to extend their water right. Housekeeping issues. There are a number of resolutions on tonight's agenda, except for the public records policy update. They're primarily end of the year housekeeping issues like the required resolution to approve the 2021 budget, the 1% increase, the levy certification, which doesn't need a resolution, and we need to update and extend the expired COVID-19 resolution. Security issues. I thought I may have found a camera system that'll do what we need However, there isn't one single system that will allow us to tie all of our facilities together, whether it's via Bluetooth or the internet because there's no Wi-Fi at the North Shore. So we will need at least three of these and possibly four. I've also had a representative from ADT out to look at our sites and see what they had to offer. It was then I discovered we're gonna have a problem tying the cameras at the marina to the rest of the system here in the park due to the voltage drop created by the length of the dock. Except for that, the Lorac system I originally thought would work here still will. I'm looking into ways to solve the voltage drop issue. Another solution could be to use several smaller systems which could all be monitored separately. ADT may have a product that'll work, but the rep's going to check out, check that out and get back to me this week. However, the North Shore is more of a challenge due to the lack of Wi-Fi. 
However, the LARAC system will work at the launch for sure and the marina very possibly. Also, I had originally talked with IntelliSystems probably six months ago, and he was supposed to send me a bid. I never did hear from him. And over the weekend, the gal that is his right-hand person used to be my right-hand person years ago at Apple. And she said she would get on his case and make it and get the bid to us. So uh, I'm going to keep working at this. We may end up with three or four different systems that can be monitored remotely but separately. And I'm still hopeful we can find one that'll tie everything together. I've also contracted our grant manager at the, for the marina project, sent her a scope of work amendment to cover the cost of this for the marina. That way, at least we'd not have to pay for that portion of it. Any change in scope has to be approved by the legislature and I've reached out to both Representative Griffey and our lobbyists trying to push this forward. WPPA meeting schedules. The annual meeting is set for Wednesday, December 2nd, starting at 8 a.m. and running until Friday. The December 4 uh, meeting runs till noon. This was changed from an in-person meeting to a virtual meeting. We're waiting on registration and agenda items from WPPA. Since this is a Zoom meeting, if you all wanted to, we could watch it downstairs on the big screen and still be able to social distance. We could also have breakfast and or lunch brought in if you wanted to do that. But I need to know your availability for the annual meeting so I can get everybody registered. Port Day in Olympia set for Tuesday, February 2nd at the Capitol. Policy updates. Early in the year, I told you I'd be looking at our policies and procedures and updating them where it was appropriate. On the agenda is an update to our public records policy. Our previous policy only stated we would comply with any and all state statutes concerning this and call them out by the specific wax. However, this is much more detailed version and doing this update was strongly recommended by Steve DiGiulio, who also provided the boilerplate language for it. There's a resolution on the agenda for its adoption. Also next month, I'll have an updated cybersecurity policy for you. Redistricting. At the small ports meeting, two sessions were spent on the process of redistricting. When the census results become available in May, we'll have eight months to draw new commissioner district boundaries consistent with census information. Our deadline for completing this process is January 15th, 2022. This will require engaging a consultant, some public hearings, and a cost upwards to an estimated $10,000 or so. We'll have to budget for this in late 2021, and I anticipate we'll be doing mid-year budget review like we did this year, so we can address it then. I'm gonna, going to contact some of the other ports and see if we, they would be agreeable to sharing one consultant and hopefully reduce costs for everyone, see what they say. Uh, as well as some of the other taxing districts is every taxing district has to go through this. So I'll keep you in the loop as that moves forward. Marina float maintenance. We had a diver scheduled on Friday to clean the growth off the floats at the marina but because of the 25 knot winds that day, he was supposed to do it. He was forced to reschedule. But I also had him go out to the North Shore and inspect those as well. Uh, the North Shore has never been cleaned in the 19 years Leanne has been here, which means they most likely never have been. Uh, the diver said the growth on them goes to the bottom. He's going to submit a written proposal for cleaning everything sometime this week. Um, I think we're looking at upwards of $10,000 to do this. So I'll just wait for the proposal and see, and I'll probably get one or two other divers to come out and give us one as well. Uh, computer upgrades. The computers we have now are almost five years old and are dialing, dying slowly, but steadily. They were top of the line Dell laptops when we bought them, but they've had problems almost from day one. Mine seems to be especially problematic at this point. As much as I'm babying it, I expect it to die sometime in the near future. Leanne's isn't quite as critical, but isn't too far behind mine. They both have startup issues, and every week when Microsoft does its weekly security patches, there's some kind of new software compatibility issue almost semi-regularly. All of your iPads are out of date as well. Since all of you are Microsoft users, would you prefer to change your iPads to Microsoft Surface tablets or an Android-based tablet or the latest iPads? 
I intend to switch our office computers to Macs. Their lifestyle is longer, life cycle is longer, usually more than five years. They have much fewer maintenance problems, fewer software compatibility issues, and are much more secure. They also aren't subject to the ongoing problems created by those weekly Microsoft security patches. Macs are compatible with BIOS because it's web-based and they host it. It's not platform-specific software re residing on our machines. I confirm that again with BIOS on Friday. It's also a Mac software translator that mirrors Windows on the Mac, so it can be used with that as well. I personally have used that software translator to run QuickBooks on my own Mac with no problem. It's also a Mac version of Microsoft Office 365, and since that's hosted in the cloud, it's compatible as well. We have $8,000 in the 2020 budget for upgrades to both the Office and all of you that we haven't used, and we budgeted $9,000 in 2021 for these. I'd like to move forward with this as soon as possible, perhaps upgrading our Office computers right away and your tablets right after the first of the year. Totem pole issue. Commissioner Cooper suggested that since the totem pole has no tribal or historical significance, maybe we should just take it down and replace it with something else before it falls down. Port Centennial. 2021, the port will be 100 years old. Perhaps we should have some kind of public open house event to celebrate this, and I wanted to get your input on that. I need to find out the exact date the port was chartered, and we could plan it for that date or a weekend right around there. Maybe having some kind of commemorative plaque or monument would be appropriate and we could place it where the totem pole is now. So that's my report, unless you want me to go into old business. Uh, please do. Okay, Oyster House. We have both a geotech report and topographical survey complete and received a set of draft engineering drawings. However, Bill Ray said he needed the drawings to be more complete to be able to apply for the Army Corps permit which we need to remove the boat launch. We got those on Friday. Uh, I got an email from Bill about an hour ago, said that he will submit the Army Corps permit probably next week, that he's got some emergency job he's working on right now, but he should be able to get to it by the end of the week or early next week. Uh, once we have the permit in hand, we can take out the ramp, which we need to do by year's end or the fish window closes. We also need the drawings completed to be able to go out to bid for construction of the platform itself, but I'm just concerned with getting the permit right now. My biggest concern is the time it may take the Army Corps to approve and issue the permit. I will reach out to Representative Kilmer and our lobbyists if need, need be to see if we can't move it forward more quickly. Sweetwater Park, as reported previously, we've been approved for an RCO grant of $486,436. However, the project was number 60 out of 80 projects listed, so whether or not it gets funded it will depend on what level the legislature funds the RCO projects. However, Representative Griffey has told our lobbyists he expects all 80 projects to be funded. When I know more, I'll pass on what I learned. I talked to the Salmon Center. They're willing to pay for half the cost of a large sign announcing the project that we could put up out there. Staging area development, we're almost finished with this. Uh, we're still waiting for the PUD to set the light pole and we'll run the water line and conduit for security cameras to what will become the median, which still has to be built. But we can't really do any of that until they set the pole. After that, all we need to do is put, a, put up the signage, which we have and at least one more layer of rock. But I'm leaning towards two layers for the staging lane, one soon to be naturally compacted and another right before we open. There's no real rush on this as we're not busy at the ramp at all right now, it won't be till spring. Boating season opens the first Saturday in May, so as long as we're ready by then, we'll be in good shape. Although I am shooting for a ribbon cutting in late March, early April. Uh, I had turned in all the invoices I had for reimbursements for this project well over two months ago. However, PRISM continues to have issues and twice since I submitted them, weeks later I'd gotten letters from RCO saying they need to be finalized to be processed. Talked to our grant manager when I got the first one, she went in and looked at it, said there wasn't any problem with it and that it had been finalized and approved for processing. Then last week I got the same letter all over again. I called her again and contacted the IT manager who signed the letter. 
He said he'll look into it as well. However, the next day I received a, an email from him saying it had been processed and approved and we received the reimbursement funds last Thursday. Between both this and the Oyster House, we've collected over $50,000 in reimbursements in the past two weeks. Transit Mortgage Expansion Project. This project is complete except for the potential expanding of fire flow capacity, which we're not going to move forward on at this time. However, before the grant closes on June 30th, as I noted earlier in this report, I'm, seek I'm seeking an expansion of the scope of the project to include the security cameras. I'm going to keep it open until a final decision is made on that and how we're going to proceed with fire flow extension, if at all. All ports meeting as of now, the governor's most recent dictate, things are up in the air with nothing scheduled. Criminalization of marina rules, once we get the cameras in place, we can move forward on this. Until then, things are in a holding pattern. And finally, timber tax. Commissioner Cooper asked me to look into the timber tax revenue. In September, we collected a little over $2,100. And that's my report. Great, thank you very much. Uh, new business? Excuse me, old business, uh, Sergeant Olson, Oyster House. Yeah, what about it? This, it's on our old business items. Yeah, I gave the report. Okay, so we can go through A, B, and C. They're all done, Larry? I didn't understand you. I'm sorry. Old business items, A, B, and C are all done, completed, no discussion, no nothing. That's what I was asking Every the other commissioners. Anybody has. All right, new business items. Public hearings on allow 1% levy increase. Okay, you need to close the meeting and open the public hearing. Why is that? Because that's, that's the way it works. So. It's for the levy. It's for the 1% um, levy increase. We have and to so have uh, public. A through G are closed business items? No, just the, the public hearing for the 1% levy increase. So yeah. how about if we do B, C, and G right now as an open meeting, and then we'll go back to A. I don't know if everybody understands what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to keep the public meeting open, and then we'll go through A, if that's a closed business item. But you have you have a, a resolution after that to uh, adopt it. Resolution okay. 414 or 415, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out what you did here, but in chronological order, I'm trying to figure out how we can do everything public and then close it. So but you got to fragment it. Well, we can request that we change the agenda to put B through G first and save agenda item A to the end. But we, we have to have the public hearing for the levy increase prior to yeah. adopting the yeah. resolution. That's why I put it on there first. Okay. So let's close the public meeting. Do I have a, uh, do I have a motion to close the public meeting to hear public hearing on allowability 1% levy increase? You don't move need to close that. the public meeting. Yeah, you don't need a motion. You just you just say, you know, we're closing the public meeting, open the public hearing. Okay. Uh, close the public meeting, open the, uh, excuse me, close the public meeting, open the private meeting for new business item A, public hearing on allowability 1% levy increase. I would vote aye. Well, you have to ask if there's anybody who wants to testify about it. Diedrich? Uh, we did talk about it at our last meeting a little bit. So we've all, you know, I think we're all good with the 1% increase. We haven't, I don't think we've heard anything else from the public about negative, negatively into not getting the 1%. We traditionally do because it helps with inflation. Any other commissioners or public comment? No. All in I'm favor? Free. 
Okay, all in favor? Now you have to close the public hearing. Before the vote? Yeah. yeah. We will close the public meeting uh, and now we'll have a vote for a public hearing to, on allowing 1% levy increase. Do we have to have a motion? No, we just, he just has to open up the, the, um, you have the regular to, meeting, you have which to he just did. Hearing and reopen the public meeting. Yeah. Or, the only reason for the public hearing is if any of the public wants to testify one way or another, since no one did, you just have to close the public hearing and reopen the, the meeting. Thank you. Uh, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All in favor. Did you want me to read the resolution? Usually we'll read the well, well, I, I resolutions I, first. I, Judy, I, uh, I'm, excuse me, Commissioner, I, I'm looking for it. But yes, if you don't mind reading it, that'd be wonderful. I'm looking for it right now. Sure. It's a resolution. This is, this is, Pardon? Resolution 415. Yeah. Whereas the commissioners of the Port of Allen have met and considered its budget for the calendar year 2021. The districts, in, whereas the actual levy amount from the previous year was, and this is the, um, the budget, or was $292,222.42. And whereas the population of this district is more or rather less than 10,000 and now therefore be it resolved by the governing body of the taxing district that an increase in the regular property tax levy is hereby authorized for the levy to be collected for 2021 tax year. The dollar amount of the increase over the actual levy amount from the previous year shall be uh, $2,922.25, which is a percentage increase of 1% from the previous year. This increase is exclusive of additional revenue resulting from new construction, improvements to property, newly constructed wind turbines, solar, biomass, and geothermal facilities, and any increase in the value of state as assessed property, any annexation that have occurred and refunds made adopted this second day of November, 2020. So we do have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Here. Uh, and I hear a third. All in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much, Judy. I appreciate it. Uh, approval of resolution one, uh, 414, adoption of 2021 annual budget. Well, I move we accept the resolution 14, I mean 414. I'll go ahead and read that, be it resolved by the commissioners of the Port of Allen as follows. Whereas the Board of Commissioners of the Port of Allen have met and considered the proposed budget for 2021 calendar, cal calendar year. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of commissioners after a public hearing and duly considering all relevant evidence and testimony presented hereby resolves to adopt the budget for 2021 calendar year as proposed and presented. Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. All right, I'm not getting the resolutions and I'm looking through my emails and Larry, I'm gonna forward you everything you sent to me I am not getting any of the resolutions. So if you got everything. I have a delivery receipt that you got it. If Judy and Scott got it, you got it because they were all sent. Okay, well, I will forward you what you sent me, and I'm not getting any of the information. Okay. No, hey, please don't please don't do this. I am not getting this stuff. And if it's not coming up on my computer, I'm not receiving it. Well, I just Ted, because I have receipts that say you got it. I'm going to forward you everything I've received, Larry. I am not receiving this information. So I will do it again. And you can fold your arms. You can be impolite. But I'm not receiving the information that you say you forward off. So if there's another resolution, I'm looking at the agenda. And 
God damn it. I, I guess this is what you get when you run for a county commissioner, huh, Larry? I don't have anything to do with that, Ted. I sure you don't, Larry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, Deb, do you mind if I read the resolution 416? Please, well, Judy, because I don't have it. Before you do that, I'm going to forward all this to Ted to be sure he has it. And I will forward you everything that I've received, Larry. This is not the first time. This is only the fourth or fifth time that you've done this to me. I have not done anything of the, the sort, Ted, but no. I will forward this stuff to it's you. It's always my fault. Come on, man. I'm sorry, Judy, go right ahead. Okay, it's our public records policy, which um, I think we are just kind of updating it anyway. I just sent Re everything again. Pardon? I just sent Ted everything again. Okay. Resolution 416, whereas the Port of Allen has always adhered to the public records policy consistent with any and all provisions of the Washington State Public Records Act Whereas the Port of Allen is legally mandated to comply with any and all future amendments and updates to this state law. The, whereas the existing Port of Allen records policy was approved and adopted September 7th, 2016. Whereas the Port of Allen Commission recognizes that the state public records law has been updated and amended since the adoption of the current public records policy. Now, therefore, we, the Port of Allen commissioners, do hereby proclaim that this update to the Port of Allen's public records policy complies with all the updates and amendments to WAC 44-14-00001 through 44-14-08-004 on the date of this adoption. And that furthermore, the Port of Allen will continue to remain in compliance with any and all future amendments and updates as they occur. Adopted by the Port of Commission, uh, the Port Commission of the Port of Allen at the regular meeting thereof held the second day of November. I move we accept Resolution 416. Second that motion. I'm voting no because there are some things in that RCW that have been taken out of context with what uh, the executive director is trying to do. So I would say no. Okay. So there's a uh, motion with a second on the floor. Okay, um, and there's a, uh, my vote is no. So we still need to have a vote. Ted, we still need to have a vote on it. Okay. Do we need to have a discussion or? Yeah, we can have a discussion. Yeah, there's some things on there that uh, the executive director has taken out of context out of the RCW that I don't approve of. So I didn't my vote. Anything oh. out, of, out of context. Can, can you share what that is, Ted? So yeah, when, when a commissioner asks for employees uh, records, there is no need to have documentation to do it. We just asked for commissioner or employees records. And by the way, a public records request can come in by saying, hey, I need a public records request. There's nothing in the RCW 43, excuse me. Uh, there's nothing in the RCW that says how the format should come into. So we're at, right now we're, we're pigeonholing people on the uh, public records request. So I would, my, dis, my discussion is that if we have something that uh, we should have nothing to, uh, we should always have something to prove, nothing to hide, so. Can I speak here? I, I, I'm May not I sure why you would want to speak, Larry. Uh, well, I do want to speak, Ted. But are you a commissioner or? I am asking permission to speak. Uh, giddy up. 
According to our attorney, Steve DiGiulio, who wrote the Public Records Act, your request qualifies as a public record request. Not my decision whether it was, it was his. He uh, also said at this point, send me a copy of your existing public records policy. I sent him that. He said, you need to update it. And I said, what do I need to update it to? He sent me boilerplate information where the only thing I had to put in it was our name. I'll be happy to send you the whole string, the whole email string for it. So Larry, as a commissioner, and I'll speak for myself as a commissioner, if somebody comes up to you and says, I need public disclosure on the Port of Allen dock, I expect you as an executive director to provide information on the Port of Allen dock. That is public, uh, public disclosure. So as a commissioner, when I ask you for your public records in your text messages, I expect to receive them. I don't have to fill out a form. There's no, there's no thing in the RCW that uh, expects me to fill out a form or an exact form. So I was going by the advice of our attorney. Okay, well, okay, well, all right. I'm not gonna- Call for the it. vote. Yes. Can, can we call for the vote? Yes. Can we call uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. The uh, amendment passes. Uh, Judy, can you please keep on carrying on? Sure. Uh, next is please. resolution 417. Um, and that is in regard to the extension of COVID-19 policies and procedures. Um, this is a pretty lengthy one. It's like three pages. It's the so, same one that you've approved twice before. All I did was change the end date. Okay. Um, I guess all in a, in a nutshell though, it, re, it um, quotes chapter 53 19 of the RCWs. Um, yeah, it's pretty lengthy and I don't know if anybody wants to bother listening to that, but it'll be on the web, correct? Mm -hmm. Once it's uh, approved? Yeah. Okay. So I move that we accept resolution 417 in regard to the COVID extension. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, none opposed, it approves. Is there anything else? The levy, what is the levy certification, Larry? It's just that, uh, we certify the amount that we're uh, doing. It, there's a form there. It just needs a motion to approve it is all. Okay. I'm looking for that. I don't see it. Just a second. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. I see it. Got it. Um, yeah, see what it is. It just puts the numbers there. Okay. Do you want me to read that one or do I need to? You, is it very long, Judy? I, I no. still trying to pull some stuff it's, up. It's very short and it's uh, from the Department of Revenue. If you don't mind, that'd be, that'd be great. Okay. Um, it says in accordance with RCW 84.51.020.1, uh, Larry Coppola, Executive Director of the Port of Allen do hereby certify the Mason County Legislative Authority that the commissioners of said district requests the following levy amounts to be collected in 2021 as provided in the district's budget 
which was adopted following a public hearing held on today, 11 to 20. The regular levy is $301,000. And all it says is the refund levy is $825.59. Let me explain something there. Yes, uh, please. It is more than what the uh, unofficial certified number is. County hasn't certified the number but if there's more uh, new construction during the year or whatever, what I was told to do was just make it higher because we could always collect more, but if we put a number there and there's more tax revenue that we could have, we're only allowed to collect that number. Okay. So we can't collect, you know, if there's more money available to us and we've restricted how much that we can collect, uh, then you know that money stays in the county treasury. But if our number that we put in there is higher than what is allowable, then we can collect whatever comes in up to that number. Cool. Okay. So. Thank you. Well, I move. Do we need a, a motion on that one? I think you just direct Larry to sign it. Okay, we'll sign it. All right. <laughs> That's it. Okay, is there anything good for the order? I still haven't got the information put up, but is there anything good for the order? Well, we still have the discussion on the request about the Allen Carey water system. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's go ahead with uh, Mr. Carey's system. Well, Scott, do you have anything you want to share? Oh, so, yeah, for um, the Allen Carey water system, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a quick, letter to us and you know when Larry points out that it's it's an ability for for the system to kind of potentially to directly compete with our water system you know I, I was able to read the the letter to us and it's just you know I, I can't make a decision based off of that tonight I mean I have to think it think about it and study it a little more and you know I just think we have to table it I I'm not prepared to make a decision based off of a letter that I read you know earlier today and a, a quick conversation with Larry based off of a couple of conversations he had with, you know, the, the engineer and, you know, it, it's definitely a no for me right now, because if, if what they want to do is position themselves to be direct competitors of ours, then why would we help do that? But I'm not a hundred percent convinced that it is what they're doing. So, you know, I, I need to know a little bit more about it before, it's a definite no, but right now it's a no for me because I just don't have enough information. I got to study it some more and get some more questions answered. So I say we kick it to December's meeting. I don't think it's a special meeting because we have to, you know, pay the commissioner stipends. And so we need to go um, do some more due diligence and talk about it in December is my, my two cents. I would kind of agree with you. I, for me, it might, it might present a conflict of interest, I think for us. I'm not sure if that's a proper term, but oh, I think it is. I was a little concerned myself. I agree with both of you. So we can table that probably. Table that until the December meeting. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Larry, do you need anything else? On no, that? Well, I'll just send Jeff a note and tell him you all tabled it to uh, to get more information and you're going to talk about it next month. All right. Is there anything else? There was just one thing that, um, you know, as we're talking about our own water system and, and kind of upgrading, I, I think that, you know, we were talking, talked to about taking the locks off the fire hydrants and I know that we did and they're just, you know, sitting on there now. And, but we have to talk about uh, the proper maintenance of the system as well. So, I don't think we're doing it and we should be, it's the right thing to do. So we should talk to the, uh, our water company and see about getting on a schedule to properly maintain our, our fire hydrants because it is the right thing to do. And we want to make sure that they work correctly when, and if they're needed, um, it should not be that expensive. And I believe we have five of them. Is that correct? I think so. Yeah. So it should be fairly inexpensive. Um, they have a per, per price and 
and, and they should at the very least flush them and exercise the valves and make sure that everything's operating correctly because the yeah. worst thing what the water system manager does and that's one of the things that we're talking about in that contract awesome yeah they just I just feel as if that's something, if we're going to own the hydrants, that we should be making sure that they're taken care of. Yeah, good. That's it. Um, I have a little update. The Oyster House it probably will get roofed, I think, this week, I'm hoping. Awesome. Yeah, um, we had to get a chimney chase back over it. It'll be just a, a wood one, and then um, I think one of our local masonry guys will put fake rock around it. Um, I want it in the same position where the original one was just in case they decide to, you know, utilize it again. But one of our local contractors will be putting it on and um, it's all private donations. So it should go pretty, pretty quickly. It's been working great. Awesome. I, I did have one more thing about the, um, the totem pole, it, George Kenny, uh, he built that totem pole 30 years ago, apparently. They, we had a big chainsaw carving event in Allen, and uh, he did that over the weekend. He put it up. Um, when, when we say there's no significance to the tribe, he actually said the tribe was upset because it's not an authentic totem pole. Although it looks, it, you know, if you don't know any better, it looks pretty good. But I, I think that if we do take it down, you know, we could either – approach the tribe and see if we could put an authentic one up or maybe we could put one of uh, George's other chainsaw carvings in its place. He's got some beautiful things over there. He's got an eagle there that I think would look great there. We also have the, um, the sculpture in town that might have something to put there. And I think what Larry said and, you know, in honor of our 100 year anniversary, it would be a good, um, be nice to put something there in its place. So. Yeah, that'd be a great idea. And, and George also said that that he would be shocked if that totem pole was savable. It's probably rotten on the inside. And once we take it down, you know, he could come inspect it. But he said as far as, um, as saving it or trying to refurbish it, it's just probably not even worth it. He's, he's surprised that it lasted as long as it did. And he's got the same one up in his yard, which I never knew. He, wow. There's a duplicate one up in his yard still standing today. So... Huh. Yeah, it was just kind of a thing that he did for that weekend event, and it's been there ever since. Amazing. Yeah. That's wonderful. I like the idea of putting something in, you know, and for the 100-year anniversary. I think that's pretty significant. Yeah. Great. You know, we were the third port chartered in the entire state. Yep. So. I think we were in March. I'm not sure. I'll have to look it up. But yeah, I was going to do that. And yeah. And try to plan something around that. You know, hopefully the COVID thing will be done and then, you know, we can actually have people. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, a nice excuse for a public open house or something. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Uh, so moved. Second. Second. All right. Have a great night. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Good luck tomorrow, Ted.